I don't know what's in it for you to do that, whether you're just chasing clout or you want to make it in the news or anything like that. But if you're not willing to just support the president now and say these kinds of things, you might as well just get your MAGA hat because you now yeah. are helping Trump at this. Well, pull out that MAGA hat, John, because here you are in Fox News criticizing the president. Why? For clout? Biden has at least temporarily halted weapons to Israel and they were set to go out. The State Department said hold. And the reason that they gave was they were holding it for political reasons, meaning this wasn't due to supply chain issues or anything like that. And everyone suspected this was because Israel is going into Rafah. And that was supposedly Biden's red line. And he's kind of con confirming that here. Although he's still pretending as if Israel did not cross his red line and go into Rafa, which they've gone into Rafa, right? Um, but he is going to admit that he's holding off on weapons here. I want to ask you about something happening as we sit here and speak, and that, of course, is uh, Israel is striking Rafa. I know that you have paused, Mr. President, shipments of 2,000 pound U.S. bombs to Israel due to concern that they could be used in any offensive on Rafah. Have those bombs, those powerful 2,000 pound bombs, been used to kill civilians in Gaza? Civilians have been killed in Gaza as a consequence of those bombs and other ways in which they go after population centers. So he's admitting there, the bombs that we gave have been used on civilians. Now, the contention of the Biden administration is that this is unintentional, right? And the reason why he has to lie and pretend as if this is not exactly what they're intending to do is because to continue to supply them weapons if they're in violation of international humanitarian law would violate domestic law. So um, that would be the Foreign Assistance Act, I believe the Hatch Act as well. So he has to maintain this facade that they are accidentally carpet bombing babies and whatnot. Now, what's also interesting and a reason why I'm skeptical about this decision here and I'm waiting to give him credit is because the State Department postponed a report that they were supposed to release about whether or not Israel was in compliance with international humanitarian law. They're not. So they postponed that, right? Now, the only reason why they would postpone that is to push back this uh, this pause in weapons because, I mean, they're let's face it, they're in violation of international humanitarian law. And so if you deduce that that's the case, then you can't give them weapons. So you wouldn't push that back unless you intend to still, still give them weapons. So it's a good move. And I hope that this is the beginning of the end of the United States sending them weapons to do a genocide. Having said that, though, hold your applause for Biden, because if this is just temporary and he postpones them for a week, meaningless, right? But for now, he's doing the right thing. But let's let him continue. I made it clear that if they go into Rafa, they haven't gone into Rafa yet. If they go into Rafa. They have gone into Rafa, and she's going to explain that, but he's going to have a little caveat here. I'm not supplying the weapons that have been used historically to deal with Rafa, to deal with the cities, to deal with that problem. We're going to continue to make sure Israel is secure in terms of Iron Dome and their ability to respond to attacks like came out of the, uh, in, uh, out of the Middle East recently. But it's, uh, it's, it's just wrong. We're not, going to, we're not going to supply the weapons and the artillery shells used that have been used. Artillery since, shells as well. Yeah, artillery shells. So just to understand what they're doing right now in <clears throat> Rafah, is that not going into Rafa as, as you do? No, it is going into Rafa. They, have, yeah. they, have, they haven't gone into the population centers. What they did is right on the border, and it's causing problems with right now in terms of with Egypt, which I've worked very hard to make sure we have a relationship and help. But uh, I've made it clear to BB in the War Cabinet, they're not going to get our support. If okay, but you can't say that they're not going into Rafa when, what is it, almost two dozen people have been killed, including children? It's kind of a lie. It's a weird area to draw the line. But he's moving the goalpost because 
He said no, and they're defying him, as they usually do. So he's trying to make it seem as if, nope, they haven't crossed my red line yet. Um, I'm holding strong. In fact, they're going to these population centers. I mean, if you're worried about them bombing population centers, wouldn't you have drawn the line when they bombed hospital after hospital after hospital after they've bombed a refugee camp, bombed people getting food, waiting to get water? It's just part of the problem, and I think that uh, Ryan Grimm put it beautifully, is that, you know— um, He's, he's in a lose-lose situation at this point because he waited too long. The irony is that after losing the support of everyone who opposed what Israel has been doing, he will now lose the support of everyone who loves what Israel is doing. And all the while, he facilitated a slaughter of historic proportions. For what? Exactly. Exactly. Now, so before he did that interview, this is how one Likud member... Uh, yeah, yeah. So she's a she's a Likud member. Tali Gottlieb. This is her message to the United States. She basically said, like, give us bombs or we're going to do more war crimes. Uh, I'm going to lower the volume and I'm going to read you what she's saying just in case you're listening because she's speaking in Hebrew. But uh, so she says the U.S. is threatening not to give U.S. precise missiles. Oh, yeah. Well, I got news for the U.S. We have imprecise missiles, and we have the right to defend ourselves. So maybe instead of using a precise missile and taking down a specific room or a, or a specific building, I'll use my imprecise missiles. And I'll just collapse ten buildings. Ten buildings. That's what I will do. So, broadcasting their intent to do war crimes. And I'm sure that this is also going to go in the uh, South Africa's uh, South African genocide case. But this is the response. Biden has given them so many weapons, so much money every single year. And the second Biden hits pause after seven months of ethnic cleansing and genocide, when Gaza has been reduced to rubble, they throw a fucking temper tantrum like babies. Absolutely pathetic. Now, What's interesting is somebody asked about uh, what that individual said to uh, State Department spokesperson Matt Miller, and that individual is Ryan Grimm. So this was shared by Halal Flow. Great account to follow, by the way. Um, here's his response to that. I ask you about uh, Tali Gottlieb, Likud official, member of the Knesset. She said this. She said, the U.S. is threatening not to give us precise missiles. Oh, yeah, well, I've got news for the U.S. We have imprecise missiles. We'll use it. We'll just collapse 10 buildings, 10 buildings. That's what we'll do. So she's threatening that if Israel is held accountable for war crimes, they will respond by committing greater war crimes. What kind of effect does that have on I'd US say those, decision making? Those comments are absolutely deplorable, um, and senior members of the Israeli government should refrain from making them. Um, we will continue to make um, our policy assessments based on what's in the best interest of the American people, what is in the best interest of the region. I ask you about. Uh, so, yeah, that's bad. Not really an answer. But here's what makes it really complicated for the State Department. As they're supposed to be conducting this report on whether or not Israel is in compliance with international law, you have members of the Knesset saying, give us more weapons or we'll fucking bomb more. We'll commit more war crimes. And they're supposed to, like, continue to maintain this facade that there's an open question about whether or not Israel is uh, in compliance with international law and doing war crimes. It's just such a sick joke at this point. It's such a joke. So, yeah. Now, some people are not too happy about the fact that Biden has chosen to finally put a pause on the weapons that he's giving to Israel. And that individual, uh, in particular, that we're going to talk about, one person at least, there's a, there's a couple, but one person... That's really pissed off is John Fetterman, who went on Fox News to criticize Joseph Robinette Biden. Uh, I should call him Raisinette Biden like Hassan, because I think that's better. But uh, let's let's watch this interview here. Late. What did you make of that speech? I, I don't I, I mean, I, I thought it was I thought it was a great speech and, and uh, he's been very supportive about Israel. But I I don't agree with him on everything. Like, for example, uh, I, I was public and I said that I don't think we should be withholding any kind of munitions. And I think 
I, I said I think we need to send them immediately. You know, of course, I, I Israel is in, in this kind of a, a war, and you know, we, I have no conditions. They're in this kind of a war. They're doing a genocide. And after seven months of evidence of them carpet bombing fucking babies, destroying residential buildings, what is it, like 50% of buildings in Gaza have been destroyed? He's still pretending like this is a war. And to be clear, he's not the only one that does that. But it just it feels so wrong to say this is a war. It's an ethnic cleansing. It's a genocide. But this dude, he has shown time and again that he has absolutely no remorse for suffering Palestinians. He couldn't care less. Their lives are completely not equal to Israelis. Uh, kill all Gazans as far as he's concerned, so long as Israel is satisfied. He'll do whatever they want. It's it's so despicable. And you can say that it's because of the APAC donations. Sure, I think that's influencing him like it influences all members of Congress, like money influences all members of Congress. But there's also this extra layer of deranged uh, behavior to this where like th there's something else going on here. Like the dude is a sociopath. Yeah, as, as John put it, genocide John. He loves genocide. I never have and I can't imagine I ever will. Do you think the U.S. support for Israel, it, he said today it was ironclad, but if they are slow walking these arms sales, how can you say both things? Yeah, well, like, like I said, I, I, I do think the president has, has stood with, with Israel, but, but, you know, we have disagreed on issues like that. And like that for today, I was, uh, was very popular today that uh, I said, look, we, we really need to uh, send them. Uh, you know, if anyone, if there should be any kind of conditions, it should be on Hamas and it's ablers and it's... Dumb fuck. We're not funding Hamas. We're not giving them weapons. So what are we going to condition to Hamas? He has no comprehension of what's actually fucking going on. What what exactly should we uh, condition to Hamas? He also mentioned Hamas enablers. So what, like members of the squad, campus protesters, because they're all pro Hamas? No, they're not pro Hamas. They're anti genocide. It just, this man is such a fucking idiot. Benefactors. Do you support Israel going into Rafah? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, Hamas benefactors. He said specifically uh, what he's referring to. So, you know, Iran, Hezbollah. Um, are we funding them, though, John? <laughs> like, that's why it's, He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. It's just he has to stick to the talking points of Hamas bad, Hamas bad, Israel good, Israel good. He's like an NPC, right? He can't deviate away from the script that's in his brain. But he just uh, he was asked about Rafa, so let's hear that. Uh, well, I, I follow Israel uh, on that. I mean, they would know the, the situation more than I do. And, and I'm always trying to center this to people where it's like Hamas could, well, they started this. They did this kinds of terrible things. History didn't start on October 7th, you imbecile. And he just follows Israel. Why don't you go fucking move to Israel then and become a citizen and become a member of the Knesset? Because you are supposed to represent America and here you are groveling at a foreign country that funds you. It's so despicable. And by the way, before we get too far into him talking about Rafa, I just want to remind you that he's criticizing Joe Biden on Fox News of all places. Now, let's recall what he said not that long ago uh, when Biden was continuing to give weapons to Israel about anyone who dares criticize Joe Biden. And the president is going to win here in, in Pennsylvania. And I've always believed that whoever wins Pennsylvania is going to be the next president as well, too. And this is going to be it's going to be difficult. And we all have to lean in on that. And we also have to start having you know, all kinds of Democrats criticizing the president, too, publicly. I, I don't understand why. I don't know what's in it for you to do that, whether you're just chasing clout or you want to make it in the news or anything like that. But if you're not willing to just support the president now and say these kinds of things, you might as well just get your MAGA hat because you now yeah. are helping Trump at this. Well, pull out that fucking MAGA hat, John, because here you are on Fox News criticizing the president. Why? For clout? I mean, what an idiot. And this could end right now if they send all those hostages back home. And uh, uh, in the same week, same exact week uh, where, where this interview is taking place, let me just remind you, Hamas accepted a deal that would have facilitated the, re uh, the release of 30 hostages. And there would have been hostages released uh, 
from Israel as well, because they have thousands of Palestinians being held hostage. But guess who rejected that? It was Israel. Israel rejected that deal. So why doesn't he actually listen to people in Israel who have family members that are being held hostage? Because they don't seem too happy with Netanyahu. If you care about the hostages, they're saying, hey, going into Rafah would threaten the lives of the hostages, right? But he's just, he, he's, he has a one-track mind. It's just follow Israel no matter what, lick their boots, suck off Netanyahu if he needs me to, I can hold his balls while he pees. It's just, it's so embarrassing. And they could surrender and all of the, you know, but they clearly don't care about all the Palestinian death and chaos and, and. Yeah. Yeah. Israel does though damage. Uh, in fact, that's the way they designed that. Uh, Israel actually cares about minimizing those civilian deaths, but Hamas sees that as just their own kinds of uh, collateral damage. You've also been out. This is genuinely Orwellian because everything he's saying, like the opposite is true. Israel is trying to mitigate collateral damage. No, they're not. And to call it collateral damage, I think that's what he said. That's so gross because it's not collateral damage. These people aren't fucking statistics. We're talking about human beings with dreams and lives and ambitions and all of their lives are being snuffed out by this government that he full-throatedly suppo uh, supports. It's just, it's so gross. He is truly one of the most despicable members of Congress. And come 2028, I think that's when he's up for re-election. We all need to go all hands on deck, get this motherfucker out. Um, primary the shit out of him, anyone but Fetterman. And if he uh, if he wins that primary, then fucking I don't even care if he loses the general. You might as well put a Republican there because he's functionally a Republican. Because in this same interview, he's going to go on to talk about how um, immigration bad. I mean, he's just a Republican at this point. He is the new iteration of Kirsten Cinema. You know, we we lose one cinema, we get a new one, or we lose we lose a Lieberman. We get a cinema. We, we lose cinema. We get a Fetterman. There's always some asshole who is the conservative Democrat. And it doesn't even matter if they ran as a progressive or a populist. They're just there's always going to be one of these dickheads. And I think that a lot more Democrats probably agree with him, but they're smart enough to not vocalize their sociopathic views on this issue. Republicans are doing that. They're talking about carpet carpet bombing Gaza and turning it into a parking lot and whatnot. Uh, one of them said, kill them all. Andy, I can't remember his name, Andy something. Uh, and he's just in lockstep with the Republicans. It's truly disgusting. Spoken on these college campus protests. Yeah. And what do you feel about them when you see them? And does it make you upset? How do oh, let me guess. They're, they support Hamas and they're anti-Semitic. How do you react to it? Well, it, it doesn't, it, it's like, I don't know why they seem to, I'm not even sure what they're really, you know, protesting about. If you ask. This is the Occupy uh, Wall Street approach to protest all over again. Well, I really don't know what the fuck they're protesting about. They've said it a million times. They want their universities to divest from Israel because Israel is an apartheid state doing a genocide. If you don't know that, that's a you problem. They can't help that you're unable to comprehend what they're protesting about. Ask them, they're not really sure. They can't, you know, and now they're not talking about ceasefires anymore. And now they're talking about divesting and harming Israel. And oh, that. so you do know what they're talking about. I don't know what they're, what they're even protesting. Oh, but they want to divest. So you, you just contradicted yourself. Do you understand that? And they do want a ceasefire, but what they're trying to do is put pressure on their institutions, their universities, because they're funding those institutions. I mean, this guy, He's clueless. I would say he's an empty suit, but he doesn't wear suits. He wears hoodies, so he's an empty hoodie. And it's it's crazy, and they they really just broke the mold uh, yesterday uh, when they were now had they had protesters at Auschwitz yesterday during the Holocaust, the two mile uh, walk thing. I mean, like how much more uh, tasteless and 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 disgusting that could be? They showed up with that, um, uh, and as I said, this that it's actually working against peace in Gaza. And uh, Hamas is convinced no, that they've won the PR war. And they keep seeing all these kinds of protests uh, across the nation on these campuses. And uh, it's it's not helpful, but it's actually uh, works against peace, I think. Does it bother you? It works against peace to have college students call for their universities to divest from Israel. 
how how do you make that jump that they're harming peace like this just feels like him trying to do reverse psychology on these students where if they hear him say that, they'll think, oh, well, OK, if I want peace, I guess I should stop doing the protest like that's going to work. Like what a dummy. You that some of the people funding some of these protests are also some of the president's biggest donors. Yeah. Well, I, I don't really I don't really care who's uh, funding it. It, it. It's just like but it's it, the uh, Jewish voice for peace and the other ones. They try to pretend that they're like some groups, uh, some grassroots kind of thing. And it's not. You know, they're they're paid. And, and I have said this. I don't care if you're. I mean, it's an organization and you'll have people in the organization uh, get paid. But they're trying to draw this like connection between uh, organizations that George Soros and Bill Gates funds. But it's really a tenuous connection. And just because there's like this line that you're trying to draw doesn't mean that this isn't organic. This is organic. Like they're pretending as if this is some sort of an astroturfed thing. But no, this is an actual uprising that's taking place on college campuses across the country. It's all organic. But this is their their cope, right? They said the same thing in 2020 about Black Lives Matter. Oh my God, Black Lives Matter. They're being propped up by George Soros. When... They they can't grapple with the reality that people are just genuinely appalled at seeing police brutality, at seeing unarmed black people get killed over and over again by police, at seeing our tax dollars fund a genocide in Gaza. They can't – since they are sociopathic and they don't care about deaths of innocent people, they're just like, well, it has to be paid. They just have to be clocking in, you know, going to their 9 to 5 to protest when, no, people just – they're upset. Rightfully so. If you're not upset, I think that you're the one who has a problem because how do you not see what we're all seeing and react in complete and utter disgust? A protester paid or not, you know, if you've got to protest anything, you should be protesting Hamas. against Hamas uh, and yep, demanding that it. they take the, the, the ceasefire or they can just. We don't fund Hamas. We have no leverage or control over Hamas. So why why would they protest Hamas? That doesn't even make sense. It, and I've seen this before, too. Like somebody I don't remember who said it. Somebody said, oh, why aren't they protesting North Korea? It might have been Bill Maher. But it's like our government's not funding North Korea. So what are we doing? Like we're preaching to the choir. What's the point of protest? Like protest and hold up signs saying, I agree with everything you're doing. Like that's not why, <laughs> that's not why people protest. It's, just, it's so stupid. This logic is idiotic. Just send all these hostages back home. And if, if uh, then that, that that's very clear. They they've been showing up in my office in Philadelphia back in I think Oct October. Based. And uh, it's not it's not grassroots. It's it's just uh, paid kinds of agitation. Mm -hmm. Cope. What is your thought about um, what should be done on these college campuses? Should the police be called in? Uh, there have been incidents where, for example, here in Washington D.C where they called for help and they, they well, turned it down. I, I, honestly, I, I was reading, uh, my, I can't call him my, my former colleague, but uh, uh, Senator Sass uh, from Nebraska, you know, he's uh, uh, Florida. And I thought, he, I, thought, I thought he was right on point on that. It's like, you know, we can have protesters, we can have a space to allow that, but you can't, you can't take over. You know, we're, we're not gonna listen to or respond to or let the fringe or the kind of the, the loudest kinds of voices. Listen, you can protest, okay? Just make sure you go hide in the corner. You do it quietly. Maybe rent out a private room at the university and go protest in there where nobody can see you. That's the kind of protests that we find acceptable. <sighs> it's exhausting because these people don't understand why protest is so important and what the point is of protest. You're not going to be effective protesting against the fucking wall in the corner. You are effective when you disrupt shit and you shut things down. And it's not like these protesters are like unique uh, in the things that they're doing. Yeah, they're taking over buildings and stuff. At, at my uh, alma mater, uh, they took over the library, uh, Miller Library, and they renamed it Rafat al Library after the slain poet in Gaza. Um, but that's what they do. They, they did it during Vietnam War protests, during South African apartheid. And they were much more violent, by the way, during those protests. But uh, we forget that. And now looking back, it's easy to see in retrospect that those kids were on the right side of history. But now, since it's a new war, uh, it, we're pretending as if, you know, oh, these students are, are wrong this time, even though they've been right every other time. It's just insufferable. To respond on that, and it's like you, you can't uh, have damage, you can't spit on cops, you can't 
uh, be allowed to to stop you know things from happening and and uh, I thought that's exactly how it should should be I mean it's, it's so an effective protest right protest is civil disobedience it's going to be inherently disruptive otherwise it's not an effective protest so shut up it's a very much a, an American value to protest and and uh, free Seems speech like you're against but it, what you have manifested on the campuses now is not that. Here is uh, Michael Moore, political activist, filmmaker. Take a listen. You do have the right to take over the administration building. Based. I'll tell you, just speaking from Flint, we would have no UAW, no auto workers union, if back in the 30s, the auto workers, including my uncle, had not taken over the factories. Yes, you have to take over buildings. That is not violence. Based, Michael Moore. What do you make of that? Uh, yeah, no, I... I, I it's really you can't compare what's going on right now because there's really not you know they they use things around college uh, uh, no that's different because uh now we all agree that that's good so uh, there, shut the fuck up weasel uh, colonizing and things like that it's just it's just it doesn't make any sense and whoa, whoa, israel wait, it, it, things around colon, uh, colonizing and things like that it's just it's just it doesn't... wait they're they're pro because they're protesting israel a settler colonial project he is so stupid he listen he genuinely does not know anything about this so at the beginning of this um by zoya my co-host left me so at the beginning of this conflict he didn't even know how to pronounce Hamas. He had never heard anyone say it. He was say calling them Hamas. And I pointed that out in a video, and somebody said that I was making fun of them because they had a stroke, but that wasn't what I was trying to do. I was trying to communicate to people that he was saying Hamas because he had never heard it before because he's done no fucking research or never heard a single person say it out loud because he doesn't know anything about what's happening in the mi Middle East. He has no foreign policy knowledge whatsoever. Everything that he knows is talking points that have been fed to him by APAC. Doesn't make any sense. And Israel it represents the kind of values that, that, you know, in America. And it's like we should be able to, to defend the Israeli way of life. And we Do they, though? Apartheid? We want to defend that? Shutting down uh, news outlets like Al Jazeera? We want, we want to defend that? Absolutely ridiculous. Welcome my uh, new co-host... Poopy Figueredo has joined uh, by popular demand. He's here to see John Fetterman. Do we hate John Fetterman, Poopy? Do we hate him? Lick if you hate him. He stopped licking after I said that. Oh, there we go. Yeah, he hates John Fetterman. Can't ever forget. They are the ones that started this, and they're the ones that broke that ceasefire, and they did the most terrible things to babies, children, women, uh, tortured, mutilating, uh, systemic rape. And, and I don't understand why. It, no comments on the, the terrible things that Israel has done. No comments on the sexual abuse of Palestinian hostages being held by Israel. No comment, comment on how this entire thing got started in the first place. Didn't happen October 7th, by the way. It didn't happen October 7th. It's it didn't start on October 7th, I should say, but he's he's so clueless. That, that anti-Semitism is often at the center of a lot of this protesting and the speech that now is out there. And now fee, uh, Meta or Facebook is now like, well, is is river to the sea, you know, well, of course, that's that's calling for the destruction of Israel. And of course, that's a speech. Wait, what? Meta is doing what? Meta is saying from the river to the sea? Or are they banning it? Let me go back and see what he's trying to say. It's undeniable that, that anti-Semitism is often at the center of a lot of this protesting. It's undeniable, and the sure. That out there. And now fee, uh, Meta or Facebook is now, like, well, is, is river to the sea, you know, I don't well, know what of he's course, trying to say. That's, that's calling for the destruction of Israel. And of course, that's hate speech. And it shouldn't what be. What about when Netanyahu says it? Netanyahu said from the river to the sea, and he's currently in the process of doing from the river to the sea. All Gazans have been pushed all the way into Rafah. He's doing from the river to the sea, but it's not genocidal when he does it. We have to follow Israel, according to him. But, you know, if a college student says it, anti-Semitism. He's so full of shit. Platform by anything. This is one of the outspoken things you talk about. You've also pushed back on your party on immigration. Uh, you've also... Okay, so we're not going to get into the immigration portion of this. But he is uh, now all of a sudden a warrior for, like stricter border control even though he did not run on being an immigration hawk when he was running for the senate and his wife was a dreamer 
she was an undocumented immigrant. So for him to take the stance, it is opportunistic. He's doing it for purposes of political expediency, I guess, because I don't know how it benefits him. He's just pissing off his own base. But yeah, listen, whether or not he wants to accept this, he's out of step with his own party. Majority of Democratic voters believe Israel's U.S.-backed Gaza assault is genocide. This is according to a poll. So do you think that all of the Democratic Party's base, or most of the Democratic Party's base, I should say, is anti-Semitic? Do you honestly believe that? I mean, that's absurd, right? Let me try to zoom in for you all. Yeah, so look. Out of all voters, a plurality, 39%, Say Israel is committing a genocide against the Palestinian people living in Gaza. 39%. Like, that might not seem like a big number, but that's a plurality, despite all of the propaganda that we've been seeing. That's remarkable to me. And on top of that, even though you see propaganda on liberal news networks like MSNBC, look at this. 56% think Israel is committing a genocide, even almost a quarter of Republicans. So... John Fetterman is on the wrong side of history. He's out of step with his own party. And um, I hope that he gets cinema. That is, there's a really powerful primary challenger that runs against him that forces him to resign because he knows he can't win. That'd be the best outcome. Beta male.